Oh. Well, hello. Hopefully you can all hear me, Hamish at the back. Well, good afternoon. It's been fantastic participating in this conference so far and seeing so much innovation in disruption and technology. But every new company likes to claim they're disruptive. Disruptive means innovation, novelty, challenging the status quo, and looking at things that have been done one way and trying to approach the task or solve the problem in a different way. And over the next half an hour, I want to tell you exactly what we aim to do differently, how we're innovating, what problems we're solving. My name is Adam Seber. I'm the founder and chief executive of The Luminaire, a unique and disruptive luxury travel services business serving luxury brands and the hotel market in a novel way. And today, I want to share with you the journey we've been on as we launched our business, the unexpected direction our business took, and most importantly, share some of the really counterintuitive and fascinating research, insight, and consumer behavior that has shaped our direction and decisions. And looking to the future, why I believe luxury brands are going to become travel agents and hotels will in the future become tour operators. So what does our company actually do? Those of you that have maybe looked at our website have already come to a fair conclusion that we're a luxury tour operator, focusing on unique experiences that provide curious travelers with a deeper understanding of the world, their passions, and the places they visit. Well, that is on the surface correct, but it is literally the tip of the iceberg. And it's what we do under the surface, particularly to help hotels, that I hope provides valuable insight for you all in the room today. Now, there were two driving forces behind the Luminaire when we set it up. Firstly, the belief that there was no existing hotel brand that catered for curious travelers interested to learn about the world and have stimulating experiences. There were hotel groups that catered for wellness, gastronomy, adventure, and of course, hedonism, but nothing that really spoke to transformation, curiosity, and understanding the world. And isn't that what travel is supposed to be about? But there was, an, was this an unserved need, or perhaps this was an offering that the customer didn't want? So we conducted qualitative and quantitative research of a high net worth audience with a combined wealth of over $49 billion, and the insights were quite surprising. I'd love to share some of those with you now. And in a counterintuitive finding, probably one of the ones that surprised me the most, we asked our respondents what the most important drivers of booking hotels room, uh, hotel rooms were to them. Not a single respondent selected the traditional reasons for what we and most hotels believe to be the biggest drivers of luxury booking, a well-designed room or an expansive spa. But instead, 50% of respondents selected satisfying their curiosity about the world, and 31% selected unusual beaten, off the beaten track adventures and teaching their children about life. It seemed to us that we had gained an understanding about the luxury traveler's priorities that didn't chime with the received wisdom of the crowd. And on the day, that we received this research, I found it ironic that one of the world's best-known brands had just announced a $70 million room refurbishment program. 
Well, we believed that COVID had changed people's attitude to travel. And in global lockdowns, as people get more introspective about their lives and what was truly valuable, they started to place a stronger emphasis on self-improvement and learning. Fundamentally, being deprived of this privilege made people realize that travel was a true luxury. And it caused people to address how to really make the most of their precious leisure time. So we challenged people on what they thought in the starkest terms of learning whilst traveling. And to the question of how appealing was luxury travel, luxury educational travel, 66% of respondents ranked it at a 9 or 10 out of 10. This surprise that this wasn't a niche trend becomes understandable, I believe, because high net worth individuals, or highly successful individuals as we call them, truly understand the benefit of lifelong learning. Though, to nuance our research ever so slightly, there's something that I call the Starbucks paradox. About 20 years ago, Starbucks conducted research to understand how they could adapt the taste of their coffee to persuade loyal customers to purchase more regularly. And 80% of customers told them they liked drinking coffee strong and black. But their subsequent promotion of robust Americano didn't result in greater uptake. And in an effort to learn why, they conducted a second survey that through more developed and nuanced questioning revealed that actually, although customers said they wanted their coffee strong and black, in actual fact, they preferred it milky and weak. But like Starbucks, we know that customers want to temper their learning experiences with plenty of leisure and relaxation and pacing. One thing we learned, and we believed that our data revealed very strongly, that the future of travel is all about experts. In their everyday lives, luxury guests and travelers draw upon the best advice, whether it is from their doctors, lawyers, or tax advisors. And this mindset is no different in their leisure time. So we asked respondents what they thought about learning with experts. And with the exception of the US, all markets agreed that learning with experts is a vital consideration. 45% listed it as their primary driver. We also learned that stimulating travel is a global trend. Although relaxation was mentioned most often, education, stimulating yourself, and learning with cultural experts was the most important factor, especially for US travelers. Although preferences do differ from market to market, for example, in the UK, educating oneself and learning with cultural experts and guides was the most important. For Singapore, it was great food and drink. And for the US, it was seeing famous historical or cultural sites. We learned that there were many different themes that drive intellectual travel, the most popular being wildlife, history, and art. But there is a long tail. This gives properties an opportunity to create multiple and personalized experiences, catering, catering to many different guest types and passions. Well, when people ask why we set up the Luminaire, I actually wonder why it wasn't done 10 or 20 years ago. Because when we asked our respondents if they could name a luxury, cultural, travel, or hotel brand, 72% of respondents could not. And the next most popular answers were Four Seasons and Explorer, each receiving 2% of the vote. So that's us. And from here, as we navigated a very inflated real estate market following COVID, we developed an alternative to managing our own hotels, which was powering enriching experiences 
for the hospitality sector. And that engine is something we call experience as a service. And I'll explain what that entails and how we serve brands and hotels. But first, I'd like to take a step back and set the context of the experience market today as we see it. How does today's consumer engage with experiences and why? Firstly, the why. Consumers aged 20 to 35, often known as Generation Rent, and this is because, in my belief, not just because rising house prices have forced them to rent rather than own their properties they live in, but more because the business models of the companies they engage with and the products that they buy have fundamentally changed to a rental model. Consumers are used to renting their media. They no longer buy DVDs, they use Netflix. They rent their cars from car clubs, and they never even own their most valued possession, their phone. They realize that they can exist without buying assets, and this has caused a fundamental mindset shift to prioritize the ephemeral over the permanent. Another defining feature which drives why consumers engage strongly with experiences, often over goods, is that, in my view, consumerism has become focused on community. Consumers want to engage with brands on a much deeper level than ever before. And maybe this is because society has become less religious, or maybe it's because Western societies have become disaffected with politics and politicians. But for whatever reason, brands have become the opinion leaders. It is not the leader of the free world that encourages athletes to take the knee to protest against inequality. It's Nike. And tribalism is an appropriate word to describe this as many brands' fans choose to express their affinity with the ultimate mark permanent seal of approval, a tattoo. Many of you have seen people have completed an Ironman with the Ironman logo tattooed on a bicep or calf. Ironman isn't a federation like the Olympics. It is a for-profit corporation owned by one of the largest private equity firms in the world. And because consumers increasingly trust the brands they engage with to such a great extent, you have to ask yourself, what would a passionate photographer or aficionado of the iconic Leica camera brand prefer? A safari with a traditional travel brand or safari lodge taking pictures of wildlife? Or a safari hotel where the hotel partnered with Leica, the guest was accompanied by a rock star photographer, they were lent the best and latest equipment and most importantly, the guest was traveling amongst like-minded people. Well, we know what our customers are telling us they prefer. And in, the, in terms of the future of travel, we're increasingly seeing what we call the exclusivity and community paradox. Ten years ago, privacy was the number one concern raised by luxury travelers. But now we hear a much more nuanced request in that guests desire exclusivity, but not privacy. And our customers are telling us they like being part of what may sound oxymoronic, uh, a, a contradiction, an exclusive community. So what is it that brands and hotel, hotels want? They know they have to attract a new and younger customer who thinks of luxury in a different way. It is a challenge for brands to think about how they connect with new generations. Luxury watch brands in particular, realizing that the 20 to 40 year old consumer may never buy an analog watch and rely in future on their phone or use the <laughs> ubiquitous Apple Watch. Omega's recent collaboration with Swatch to release a product at a lower price point 
at a more acceptable level would have been an unthinkable dilution of their luxury credentials only five years ago. But Panerai have taken an even more interesting approach. A recent selection of limited edition new releases came with unique experiences bundled into the price. One watch came with a free diving experience in French Polynesia, another with an Antarctic exploration with a famous polar explorer, and the third, a week with the Italian Special Forces diving team. Putting it simply, customers have been marketed to for years by brands, offering them a certain lifestyle. And now those customers want to take their relationship with the brands one step further by stepping through the page of a two-dimensional advert to actually have the experience themselves. And talking to you as hoteliers, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, as the hotel market is much more mature in terms of experience than luxury brands. But there are many similarities. Luxury brands have been taking their cues from hospitality for many years now, and that trend is only increasing. Since LVMH's acquisition of Belmond in 2019, they've accelerated their moves into hotels, and most recently announcing their Paris headquarters will be repurposed as a flagship hotel. In our experience and conversation with, conversations with brands and hotels, they see three main value adds from experiences. The first is creating unique marketing, storytelling, and content. As a hotel, it is much more powerful to show rich imagery, immersive video, and even written content, not showing where guests sleep or eat, but how they felt and what they experienced while staying in a particular property. The second is increasing customer loyalty. Customers are increasingly telling us that points and loyalty schemes, discounts and offers are no longer enticing. Experiences differentiate a brand or property and allow it to achieve greater brand awareness and capture great, greater repeat and recommend rates. And the third is driving new revenue streams. We conducted a fascinating piece of research looking at an underperforming four-star hotel in Venice, but with five-star potential. We showed guests pictures of a Venice hotel room and then described an experiential itinerary. We also showed them images and, 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 and content around that itinerary that included a hands-on art conservation experience, private tours of prestigious art galleries accompanied by curators in person, and maximizing the heritage of that particular property and city, an authentic Galileo-inspired astronomy experience. And at the time, the ADR for that property was 400 euros, with the comp set of the gritty palace, the Londra, and the Danielli. But when shown pictures from descriptions of the experiential itinerary, Respondents told us they would be willing to pay 1,300 euros a night, an increase of 900 euros for the luxury room with bundled experiences, which also aligned the property more closely with a comp set including the Amman and the Cipriani. Clearly, this approach allows properties to give customers a better experience and capture a greater share of wallet from, a, uh, uh, from a, a customer's holiday budget. We're also seeing a huge shift in how brands are engaging in experiences. Five years ago, brands thought experiences were something that they had to pay for and purchase for their VIP guests in order to reward them and encourage customer loyalty. They didn't realize that consumers were willing and in some cases would actually prefer 
to pay for them in order to have a better experience. The other way that brands used to think about experiences were as concepts never actually intended to be purchased, but designed to create marketing noise. I, I call this the golden truffle burger analogy because every year a restaurant brings out a burger that's never actually intended to be eaten. The travel equivalent would be something like an around the world luxury ultimate tour, which at least one unimaginative PR company seems to release annually. But w what are the outcomes that we predict from this changing trend? The first is that brands themselves are going to become travel agents. And interestingly, the innovators in this area so far have been cultural institutions. The Smithsonian in the United States realized that it could monetize travel and created Smithsonian journeys, albeit on a small scale years ago. And I'm excited to announce here that we've become the official partner for the Naturalist Biodiversity Center, Europe's biggest and voted the best museum in Europe, creating experiences for their customers. This summer, we're starting with a luxury camp and dinosaur dig in the wilds of Wyoming. So brands are already becoming travel agents. And in the future, customers are going to be buying their holidays for brands. And the next extension, I believe, we're going to see are hotels becoming tour operators. In other words, that the hotel does not just offer the accommodation portion of our customer's experience, but in fact, the entire package, including flights, transport, and most importantly, experiences. And as we saw from our research, hotels are well placed to service this need as consumers are just saying that they desire human assistance to help them book as this quote highlights, due to the additional detail needed when it comes to booking experiences. So what is experience as a service? Well, with our clients in the hospitality sector, the role of the luminaire is to align the DNA of each brand, understand the customer profile and need, and the underlying commercial objectives of the hotel. And in so doing, we can deliver and design enriching and differentiated experience that each hospitality client can distribute to their audience. The three Ds, if you will, the design, the distribution, and the delivery. Not only do these experiences help our hospitality clients tell more compelling stories through content, help them grow customer loyalty and drive new revenue streams and acquire new customers. But we can design the experiences very finely to address strategic objectives. These could include promoting the launch of a new hotel and a new property, or helping a launch in a different market. It might be to help increase occupancy potentially in low season or shoulder week, or it might be as a part of a repositioning and increasing ADR. As many larger brands are diversing into service residences, experience could even help with the commercial objective of increasing sell-through for those residences, or even uptake and usage of these service residences. So how does it manifest itself? I'd love to give you a couple of case studies. And in addition to Naturalis and the brands and hotels that have already signed up to work with us include the World Monuments Fund, Magnum Photographs, one of the world's best known fine art and photography brands with four and a half million followers on Instagram. It is the iconic brand in photography and Mustique, the original private island. So the Cotton House on Mustique is their iconic and independent hotel. And it has many idiosyncratic challenges. Although Mustique has a reputation 
as the preeminent private island, anyone can book the hotel. And in fact, this point, almost a deliberate secret, is perhaps the hotel's first booking and customer acquisition challenge. But it also shares many universal challenges with independent hotels around the world, such as managing occupancy during the low season and shoulder weeks. And this is where experiences can help support occupancy and build ADR. Only a few weeks ago, we designed and built a one-week residency with one of the world's most famous photographers, Jonas Bendigsen, allowing the hotel to price its rooms at a higher level than it would have been able to without the experiences, even taking into account the cost of the experience delivery. And the additional benefit of deploying world experts like Jonas into experiences and residences is that they all bring their micro communities of passionate fans that can be leveraged for sales. What better audience to target than super fans of a world expert already? Bringing new customers to a property rather than leveraging the old ones. But the biggest challenge that hotels need to overcome as they move into experiences and challenge tour operators is how to operate 24-7, 365. Tour operators don't have this challenge because if they organize a group tour, they can plan 12 departures a year, and so the time required for experts, hosts, and guides to participate is very limited. However, to be truly experiential as a hotel, you're limited to the tour operator model. In other words, creating set departures or residences. This challenge of scale or scalability is what is currently holding hotels back from becoming fully experiential. And we be believe and see that the way that this can be solved in the very short term is through technology. And we're actively looking at AR as opportunities to deploy in hotels in order to allow an expert, even a world expert, who even in normal circumstances would not be able to travel to a particular site due to availability and diary constraints, but putting them directly in the hand of the guest. This technology already exists, and we are trialing it within the next year, and early adopters will certainly be able to benefit from it. Well. I'll leave you with a quote. Earlier this year, we delivered an art gallery and residential experience in Scotland for one of our uh, art gallery partners. And they've certainly seen the future, and we agree with them. Thank you very much.